Welcome in to the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and it is time to do the quarterback rankings for week two of the fantasy football season. And uh, it's fitting that we'll start with the quarterbacks, given how big, you know, this the biggest storyline of the season probably just happened in the last game of week one within, uh, well, it's not within five snaps, but within five snaps of Aaron Rodgers' career with the Jets. Uh, you know, obviously, I hope he is able to somehow make a recovery. Probably not likely, so that sucks. And we'll get right back to Aaron in a moment. First of all, just a heads up as far as the projections go. Kind of freestyling it right now. I'm not doing any projections. You will get to see my projections once we come to week four. At that point, I will have some a, a, a proper enough amount of data given how long an NFL season is in order to start making some calculations and, and looking at those to help me with my rankings. But for now... We're going in naked, and this is what it is. Also, there will be floors and ceilings for players, which I think can be helpful. So keep an eye out for when all of that comes out. That will all be up on my website, as will be these rankings all week. You can find them. They'll be updated throughout the week. Uh, I might look for your opinion on a couple of players this week within my rankings if you think I should move them down or up a couple of spots. Yeah, you can find those up on the website, www.theffforge.com. There's a link down in the description, and you can see the website title just right below me. And last up, before we get to recapping how I did with my DFS predictions for you and my love them and my fade them last week, I want to remind you that I will be going live one hour prior to kickoff Sunday morning for all of your start-sit needs. So come on and join me for that. Now, on to the DFS buys. For week one... I suggested if you did not want to go dirt cheap at the quarterback spot, but you also didn't want to spend the total premium for uh, you know some of those top guys, to go with Justin Herbert, he was fourth on the week for scoring. So I would say that that was a victory there. And then I said that if you're looking to go dirt cheap, that you could take a shot at Baker Mayfield, and he ended up 11th in scoring on the week for the quarterbacks, which I think that was a victory as well, given how cheap it was. I think I had a winning lineup. I think that Baker Mayfield was in that one. Don't quote me on that, though. Now, as far as the love em goes, last week I loved Aaron Rodgers, and I cannot take an L for this, just as I would not take a W if a Fatum got injured in the game. We don't know what the results would have been without injury, but um, if you started Aaron Rodgers, you might have very well gotten an L, so I apologize for that, if that influenced anyone. And as far as the Fatums, Dak Prescott ended up 28th on the week. I said to Fatum, so I think that that went uh, well if you decided not to play him. I really don't recall what my argument, like looking back on it, I'm like, why did I pick Dak Prescott? I doubt that my argument was because I thought the game would go like that, but um, I don't know. For whatever reason, I ended up uh, having some good opinions there for you. So I will give my DFS buys for this week at the end of the video. But before that, let's get to these rankings, which you can see my first tier of rankings over there to the right of me, maybe? I'm not even, I don't know which way it is. It's one or the other. My first top nine quarterbacks. I have Patrick Mahomes ranked number one, followed by Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert at five, Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Tua Tagovailoa, and Joe Burrow. And over here on the far right-hand side, you can see the difference between me and the current ECR as of uh, moments before filming this. So currently I'm two spots ahead on Patrick Mahomes, for instance. I'm, I'm not two spots ahead or below on anybody, but I'm a little bit high on Trevor Lawrence, a little bit high on Patrick Mahomes, and a little bit high on Tua Tagovailoa, low on Josh Allen. Tua's going up against New England, so don't expect what you got last week from him, but I do have enough faith in that offense that I am going for it. But, you know, maybe I should have Joe Burrow. It seems like it might be a little bit of a safer option despite what happened in week one. I don't know. It's not like Baltimore's defense absolutely sucks. So let me know between those two who you think I should have higher. Realistically, I could see by the end of the week, Joe Burrow going up as high as my QB6. If I just gain a little bit of faith, maybe forget what happened last week a little bit by the end of the week. This is my first tier 
And the main idea for these tiers is to think that, well, I'm probably not going to drop a guy out of the tier. The movement as I update the rankings throughout the week will probably be within the tier and not outside of tiers. So at my quarterback nine spot, this doesn't feel right. An ECR difference of nine? There's no way that's correct. Kirk Cousins is currently ranked 19th via ECR. Going up against Philadelphia, yeah, it's it's a good defense. I mean, we just saw New England's offense kind of go off on them. Uh, fantasy point-wise, especially for the quarterback, it wasn't a terrible week for Kirk Cousins fantasy-wise. So, you know, I'm uh, I'm holding strong with Kirk Cousins this week. Could he fall a few spots? Or if I hear, especially if I hear some good arguments against it this week, sure, could happen. Uh, but that's a little bit surprising that he'd be all the way at 19. Then we have Deshaun Watson, a little bit high here. Jared Goff and Anthony Richardson, I have four spots below the ECR. Yeah, I'm not going to argue against that. I, this isn't for any reason of disliking Anthony Richardson going up against Houston. Uh, just being a little bit cautious, I suppose. Last week I was high on him, this week I'm low on him. We'll all come to some sort of consensus on Anthony Richardson but yeah, he looked good in week one. So if you want to start him over any of these guys, I'm not going to be opposed to that. And once again, it's within this tier. Very well could could end up rising him up this week. If I uh, think about it a little bit more, is going up against Houston again. So not a great, uh, not a bad matchup, I should say. And that'll bring us to these third tier of guys. A little bit of a bigger tier yet again here, starting off with Daniel Jones as my quarterback 14, Geno Smith, Jordan Love, Dak Prescott in at QB 17, Brock Purdy, Mac Jones, Russell Wilson in at QB 20, followed by Baker Mayfield, Sam Howell, and Derek Carr. So it seems like I'm mostly in line with the ECR on a lot of these guys. It's a little bit of shaking up here and there. But I do have Baker Mayfield four spots ahead of Chicago, ahead of ECR going up against Chicago. So once again, I'm just optimistic about the matchup, just like I was against Minnesota last week. He was able to come through last week. So yeah, just a little bit of extra faith in a similarly good matchup for him. I'm on that. I'd be willing to play him at a certain point. And then Derek Carr have three spots behind the ECR going up against Carolina. And I just feel very similar to like the New Orleans Tennessee game. I think this could be kind of a, a slow game, a, a Duke amount kind of game, not incredibly high scoring, uh, at least at least for a lot of the game. So I just I don't quite see the ceiling this week for Derek Carr going up against Carolina. But I would feel safe playing him. And that's just kind of how a lot of this group, well, it goes from like upside, but uh, maybe didn't have good performances to still question marks, but like, hey, had a good week one. But for me, like going up against Atlanta, another game, I don't necessarily see the upside for Jordan Love. That should be a slower game uh, pacing wise. Atlanta's going to want to run a lot and Green Bay did not have a good run defense. Well, hasn't had a good run defense really for a while now. They've made some improvements, maybe, but that is yet to be determined. And um, it, it's tough to tell against Chicago if it was improved or not. I would say probably yes, though. But up against Atlanta, it might not be improved enough. Then uh, Dak Prescott is going to be my fade of the week again. I did that actually not realizing that I faded him last week. So sorry, Dak. But he is going up against the New York Jets. And so, yeah, that scares me. I think uh, we could see 28 points scored between these two defenses, Dallas and the New York Jets. And both offenses could be looking something like their opponent's offenses did last week. Dak Prescott could throw three picks and have a Josh Allen-esque week. That's possible. Then on the other side of that coin, just a couple spots behind him, though, I have Mac Jones going up against Miami. Uh, you know, New England's probably going to force Miami to play a little bit of a different ball game, maybe probably going to slow down the pacing, but still uh, it, it could go anyway, and I still expect this to be uh, at the worst case scenario, an average, you know, uh, scoring game at the end of the day between these two teams. 
So I'm once again excited about the potential upside for Mac Jones. And I think that that Miami offense uh, might be able to put up another like 30 points against New England. Might take him a little while to get there, but um, force New England to throw some more and whatnot. So there is my third tier. And right behind that, I have this little tier of um, guys who I'm just a little bit weary to pull the trigger on. And one guy who I, I might have to move up, I don't know, uh, at least within this tier. I think I would keep him below Derek Carr because Buffalo's defense is definitely better than Carolina's. But Matt Stafford going up against San Francisco scares me, but I also like the talent of Matt Stafford, and he uh, did pretty well in week one. Ryan Tannehill has a really good matchup but looked really bad in week one, so it's tough to trust that. And so I'm not trying to trust it, but he is another guy dirt cheap in DFS. If you wanted to go for him, I know I didn't give my DFS options yet. He's not my DFS call, but you could take a risk on it. A lot of people, I, I, I doubt a lot of people will. We'll see. And then Jimmy Garoppolo uh, going up against the Buffalo Bills. So actually I see a lot of upside in this game. Once again, I'm going to ask you here, should I be moving him up ahead of Ryan Tannehill and Matt Stafford? I kind of think I should. Let me know. And that brings us to the end of the quarterbacks. Kenny Pickett, CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, Desmond Ritter, Zach Wilson, Josh Dobbs. Guys who I'm really not trying to play. Uh, you know, if I'm in a two quarterback league, quarterback league I'm, I'm hoping that I have a third option to go for outside of them. That's basically it. Like, you know, Cleveland absolutely... Do we really expect... Cleveland to not be able to shut Kenny Pickett down after what they did last week? Kind of do. So that's going to bring us to our DFS buys. Once again, we have the Fatum of Dak Prescott, the Lovem of Mac Jones for next week. I always try, you know, I could go with like guys up here, but I try to pick guys who maybe you'll actually, that advice might come into play with and uh, take a little bit of a risk. I don't like to make the easy calls. So obviously, I love Trevor Lawrence. That's clear, but you know, I, I like to, to go for it. So, speaking of Trevor Lawrence, he is my, my similar to Justin Herbert last week buy. If you're not looking to pay the ultimate premium, but you're not looking to go for a cheap quarterback or for, a, you know, a random name, something like that, then go with Trevor Lawrence this week. I really, really like the matchup there going up against Kansas City. I think it could be a, a high-scoring affair with a lot of throwing back and forth. All the better if we can get Travis Kelsey back for that. Then Mac Jones and Baker Mayfield are going to come in at a tie here, basically, for my, if you just want to go bottom of the barrel for the pricing at the quarterback spot on your DFS roster. They are 5200 for Mac Jones, 5100 for Baker Mayfield. I give a slight edge to Mac Jones as I did pick him and have him ranked higher than Baker. But uh, if you need to save that $100 because it can get you somebody else that you want somewhere else on your roster, then take a dip on down to Baker Mayfield and feel fine about it. The Baker Mayfield fart. Mart. Okay, that's obviously the end of the video. Peace out. I will see you with the rest of the ranking videos. I will come out with the... Probably do the running backs tonight. So, see what happens when that video is released, what position it is. Bye-bye.